These are the most popular Garmin watches under $400, and they can be really, really hard to tell apart. They generally look similar, the prices fluctuate, so one might be more expensive than the other or cheaper than the other depending on the day. So today in this video what I want to do is break down the differences between the Garmin Venue SQ, the Garmin Venue SQ Music, the Garmin Venue, the Garmin Venue 2, the Garmin Venue 2S, and the Garmin Vivo Active 4. So I want to break down these watches to help you decide which might be the best smart fitness watch for you. Look, Garmin doesn't make this easy. All of these watches are fitness tracking smart watches, but even at the lower end, the Venue SQ can monitor your heart rate, blood oxygen steps, and other important metrics about your body in motion and in rest. All of these smartwatches range in price from $129 to $400, but like I mentioned, Garmin puts them on sale often and often at big discounts. So we'll work our way up from the lower end to the higher end, and I'll mention what the differences are between these watches as we go up, but I'll also mention the regular price as well as the sale prices that you tend to find these watches at. With these Garmin watches, once you've decided on one, it really pays to wait for a sale, which is bound to come around every few weeks so you can get the best price possible. With that said, let's start with the Venue SQ, which will give you a good baseline of what these smartwatches can do, and we'll build up from there. I'll let you know what differentiates all of these watches as we go up in price. Released in late 2020, the Venue SQ is one of Garmin's newer watches compared to the entire lineup I'm going to show you. The Venue SQ's regular price is $199, but I've seen it as low as $129. It weighs 37.6 grams, which is the lightest of these Garmin watches, and has a very Apple Watch-like square shape hence the SQ in the name. The screen is Gorilla Glass 3, a tough material used on some smartphones, and it's resistant to scratching. Still, I would be careful around metal objects like coins or barbells. Metal tends to scuff up Gorilla Glass pretty fast. The SQ comes in a variety of colors. This is the slate version, but you can find it in other colors like white and orchid purple. You can change the bands, which are a standard 20mm size, and there's plenty sold from third parties like Etsy, or even Garmin themselves, and you can mix and match the bands, which are quick release, as you like. Personally, I like the fit of the SQ's wider band compared to something like the Venue 2S, for example, which has a thinner 18mm band. The watch faces are a similar size, but the band here is a little bit smaller, and the Venue 2S, for example, is a little bit heavier, so the Venue SQ is just a little bit less noticeable on my arm. The SQ is a little bit easier to forget about once it's on your wrist, and something like the Venue you might notice just a little bit more throughout the day. Back to the design of the SQ, it's square, which I've grown to like a little bit less than the round options. The screen is 33one millimeters diagonally, but there is a thick bezel around it, so it doesn't maximize use of the surface of the watch face, as well as something like the Vivo Active or the Venues. But the LCD display is bright. You can set it to three different brightness levels or have it automatically adjust the brightness based on how bright it is around you. On a run outside or in otherwise bright sunny conditions, you won't have trouble seeing the screen. And indoors, it's not too bright when you might need to check your daily stats before going to bed at night. The screen resolution is 240 by 240 not fantastic, but more than capable of showing a variety of watch faces you can choose from, or show your stats, or get animated goal notifications, like when you hit your steps for the day. You have different fitness modes, like treadmill, bike, and elliptical, and the Venue SQ will also automatically put you into running or walking mode after you start moving. You can adjust this, and I'll talk more about it once we get to the software, but I mention it because after a walk or run or other exercise using the onboard GPS, the Venue SQ will even show you a little map of the trail you took. Not the greatest resolution, but it's enough to give you all the information you need to track your workouts and, of course, track the time. Around the back of the Venue SQ, we have some pretty interesting green and red flashing lights. Those are used to monitor your heart rate and your blood oxygen levels. None of these Garmin watches are medical devices, but you can also set it to alert you if there are any abnormal heart readings that are detected. These sensors on the back are also used to give you a variety of other metrics about how your body is working at any given moment. The SQ uses a series of widgets you can customize to check in on yourself. The My Day widget shows you your intensity minutes for the week, steps, and calories for the day, plus any workouts you may have recorded. Swiping through some of the other widgets, you can check out your health stats, which includes your heart rate, stress levels, body battery, and breathing rate. Digging into the details of each widget will show you things like your heart rate over the past four hours, and tapping the screen will show you your average heart rate for the week. 
Now, the body battery widget is an interesting one. It gives you a score out of 100, which shows you how much your energy levels might be, and whether or not you should be exercising or perhaps taking a recovery day. If you got a good night's rest, you should start close to 100. As you go through the day, stress, exercise, and time will all lower your body battery. I find the body battery metric to be a good indicator of how I'm feeling, even more than the sleep analysis. So it seems like Garmin's algorithm, which uses your heart rate, and your respiration, all of those things that it plugs into its algorithm seems to do a pretty good job of indicating of how you might be feeling at any given moment. Now, the body battery metric is pretty consistent throughout the day as it goes up slowly and it goes down slowly depending on your activities. But the stress meter, that changes a lot more frequently. By analyzing how variable your heart rate is, the SQ gives you a score from 0 to 100. Anything over 75 is considered high stress, 50 to 75 medium, 20 to 50 low, and 25 to 0 is your resting state. On the watch itself, you can see your stress levels from midnight to the current moment, or on the Connect app, you can see your stress levels over the day or the past couple of weeks. And the stress metric is pretty cool. Like, you might be stressed out and not even know it. Like, after a hard workout, your body might be experiencing some positive stress where it's recovering your muscles and it's recovering after a long workout. Or you might have a long Zoom meeting which you might not realize is stressing you out. So it's a good metric to have, and it's very interesting to see your stress levels go up and down throughout the day, and also to pinpoint things that might be triggering you that might be making you more stressed than you realize. Before a walk, run, swim, ski, or other kind of workout, you can press the top button of the SQ to choose from a large selection of workouts, set some favorites, and get started tracking that specific exercise. All of these Garmin watches have that feature where you can select a workout and get started, although some of the higher-end venues will have additional workouts like HIIT workouts, for example, but for most common activities, you're going to be covered. Oh, and they are waterproof down to about 50 meters, which means you can go swimming with these watches as well. You can also download a variety of additional widgets like a compass or on watches that support it, an altimeter. The Venue SQ doesn't have an altimeter, but the Venue, Venue 2, and Vivo Active do. Those additional widgets and watch faces can be downloaded through the Garmin IQ app, which is a separate app from the Garmin Connect app. Having these two apps separate is not very intuitive, but if you want to expand your watch's capabilities and even download an additional watch face, know that the Garmin IQ app is where you can do all of that. And overall, the interface, I like the way it's designed. It's really intuitive, it's easy to use. I find myself checking my active and rest calories throughout the day and getting up and moving around when my watch buzzes and tells me, hey, You've been sitting and editing a video for too long. The interface is very clean and straightforward, but what I don't like about it is that it seems like Garmin kind of intentionally clips the features of the lower-end watches to make space in their lineup and not cannibalize their more expensive offerings. For example, you can only see a graph of your stress levels since midnight, but not get an average score like you can in the Garmin Connect app. That app greatly enhances the data you can pull from the watch, but other watches like the Venue 2, for example, can show you additional sleep data, stress minutes throughout the day, and your body or battery statistics all on the watch itself. The Garmin Connect app is a very powerful tool and great companion to the Venue SQ, but if you want to be able to see more of those charts and statistics on the watch itself, like sleep data, you're going to be disappointed and need to check out one of the other Garmin watches. Overall, of all of these watches, the best bang for your buck is the Venue SQ, especially when it's on a sale at $129. You get six days of battery life or 14 hours of GPS on time, which unless you're running an ultra marathon is gonna get you throughout most days. And these watches all have quick charging, so 10 minutes plugged in will get you about another day of battery life. So if you only plug this watch in when you're brushing your teeth in the morning and at night, for example, then you should have plenty of battery life to get you not only through a day, but maybe for a week. To get a full charge, the watch just needs to stay plugged in for an hour, which is really, really good and really convenient. Now, the Venue SQ is missing an altimeter, so it doesn't track your floor's climb, although when the GPS mode is on, it will track your elevation. Like all these watches, you can get notifications. Android users, you can set up preset relies from the watch itself, but on iOS, you can only read incoming messages and see who might be calling you. With safety features like emergency dialing and find my phone and all the sensors that Garmin have packed into the Venue SQ does have a couple of small drawbacks. The drawbacks mainly being that it has small onboard storage, onboard software that could be more detailed, and the lack of an altimeter. The next watch I'm going to show you though, the Venue SQ Music Edition though, does solve one of those issues. 
The Venue SQ Music Edition is a lot like the SQ, with some small differences like the darker watch color and band. There's also a price difference though, too. The Music Edition is $50 more and has a regular price of $249, but I've seen it on sale for as low as $199. Physically though, otherwise, the SQ Music is very, very similar to the SQ. The onboard software is basically the same, as are the features, except for one. The Music Edition has Spotify, Amazon, and Deezer loaded onto it so you can download playlists and songs directly to your device. The benefit is mainly if you want to be able to listen to music without bringing your phone with you. Now if you always have your phone on you when you go for a run or a hike or go to the gym, then the $50 extra for the Music Edition doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You can still stream music through your phone to your headphones and control it with the normal SQ. You can hit pause and play. So you've got all those controls on the watch itself, but if you know you want to go places without your phone, like if you want to go for a long run without your phone, or you want to go to the gym and not have your phone physically on you and just listen to music, stream it directly from the watch itself, then the $50 for the music edition might make sense to you. Now I want to detour a bit and show you the Vivo Active 4. It's a bit of an older watch, it came out in 2019, but its regular price of $349 regularly dips to under $200. It's on sale a lot for $250 and under $200. And at that price of $200, it's competing with the SQ edition. And it also fixes all the gripes you might have with that particular watch. First of all, here's what's similar. The software interface is basically the one you have on the SQ series. Widgets with heart rate, stress, and body battery, to name a few. It doesn't show you sleep data on the watch like the SQ or the SQ Music Edition. But like the SQ Edition, you can download your songs from Spotify, Deezer, or Amazon to listen to without your phone. This is a very similar software experience compared to the SQ. But the Vivo Active 4 does add an altimeter, so you can see your floors climbed throughout the day. And like the other watches, you can download the Garmin IQ app and change the watch face and display some metrics with the flick of your wrist. So for example, your heart rate or your calories burned throughout the day, you can add all of those to the home screen and the screen compared to the SQ is a lot bigger. So this watch face does give you more screen real estate to see your metrics and to flip through the widgets. It's just a nicer experience to look at compared to the smaller screen of the SQ. Physically, the Vivo Active 4 has a nice round watch face with a metal band around the bezels. The screen is also an interesting one. It's transreflective MIP, meaning it reflects light so it becomes brighter in bright conditions without using much battery life. Compare that to an LCD screen, which has to pump out more power to the screen to get brighter to compete with ambient light conditions. The Vivo Active 4 has a bit of a more premium look than the SQ and comes in two different sizes. The Vivo Active 4, which has a 45mm watch face, versus the 40mm of the 4S. The 4S, if you have smaller wrists, might make for a better fit. But smaller doesn't mean less expensive. Like all of the Garmin watches that have two different sizes, like the Venue 2 and the Venue 2S, they're the exact same price, so if you're thinking you can save a couple of dollars by maybe getting the smaller size, that's not the case. The large screen, the smaller screen, same price. So who is the Vivo Active 4 for? Well, it's likely to get a refresh sometime soon. There have been no rumors yet about a Vivo Active 5, but given its release date in 2019, the 4 is due for a refresh or at least an update. So right now at its regular price, I'd say go for a Venue 2. If you're going to pay $350, you might as well get a Venue 2, which is on sale usually for $350 and comes in around $400. But at the sale price of $200, it's a great deal because it gives you two options for watch faces, more screen real estate in both of them compared to the SQ because you have smaller bezels, and it also gives you a much more premium and refined look. You also get an altimeter so you can track your floors climbed and number of stairs you climb throughout the day and you can download your music for offline use. In short, the Vivo Active 4 has a similar software experience to the SQ. It's almost the same, but it's got a larger watch face and a more premium look, plus an altimeter, and it lets you download music for offline listening. And again, it only makes sense to get the Vivo Active 4 at its sale price of $200. Anything more than that, and it makes a lot more sense to look at the Venue 1 or the Venue 2 or the Venue 2S, which I'm gonna show you right now. Speaking of the Venue, the original Venue came out around the same time as the Vivo Active 4. It also comes in a variety of colors like slate or rose gold, but only comes in a single 30mm watch face. It's round with a respectable 5 days of battery life or 6 hours in GPS mode. 
more or less, it's running the software of the SQ and the Vivo Active 4. Like the Vivo Active 4, it also has an altimeter to track elevation. All in all, a very capable watch. Now here's where price comes into play. Garmin regularly drops the price of the Venue, the Venue 1, down to a sale price of about $210 or $220. That price, it's a much better option than the Vivo Active 4 because it's a little bit newer and it gives you a couple more bells and whistles than the Vivo Active 4, for example. Anything more than that, anything more than $250, and you should start considering looking at the Venue 2 series. But for around $200, the watch to get is the Venue, if you can find it at that sale price. Anything more expensive than that, and you should really be looking at the Venue 2 or the 2S. Now the Venue 2 comes in two sizes, a 45mm and a smaller 40mm 4S. The Venue 2 has a larger 20mm watch band, while the 2S has an 18mm. I personally find the smaller watch face fits better for me because I have thin wrists, but the thinner bands aren't quite as comfortable. I do like the look, the round watch face has a metal band around the front, which looks quite premium, and it should. The regular price of the Venue 2 and 2S is $399, although I've seen it drop down to $349. It comes in several colors like this slate, rose gold, or silver, but as my personal preference, I wish there was a matte version of the metal band around the edge so it wasn't quite as reflective as it is. Around the back of the Venue 2 is an updated heart sensor and O2 monitors that are supposed to give more accurate readings. When I compared them to the SQ though, they were more or less the same, but it does seem like some fine adjustments and calculations are made with the newer hardware. I will say though, comparing the calories, stress, body battery metrics, those were identical, so the software calculations going on in the watch seem to be the same. You've also got your charging port, which is a standard Garmin size. Unfortunately, it's not USB-C, but like all the other watches, it has quick charging as well. Unfortunately, none of these watches have wireless charging, but not including a wireless charging coil probably leaves a lot more space for the battery, which is a worthy trade-off. Now, this downloadable watch face I'm using here is called the Glance. It's very customizable and lets you show calories and steps and other metrics with the flick of your wrist. You can also, like the other Garmin's, tap the screen twice to wake it up, or have it set to an always-on display, but that will really eat into the 11-day battery life of the 2 and the 10-day battery life of the 2S. The battery life will diminish to 22 or 19 hours in GPS mode, which is way more than most workouts will require. The 416 by 416 resolution AMOLED screen is sharp, bright, and the colors really pop. Because of the way AMOLED works, it does take a fraction of a second to fire up the display, unlike the LCD of the Venue SQ, which is snappier. When you're trying to glance at your screen during a run, it can be slightly annoying, but not so much to make you not like using the Venue 2. But just looking at this screen is a delight because it is so sharp. With large onboard memory, each screen gives you a lot more detail on each page than the other watches. What I like about the Venue 2 is the software experience, and it kind of makes me groan that Garmin seems to just clip the wings of the other watches when it comes to the things that you can see, the metrics you can get on the watch itself. The Venue 2 does have individualized widgets, but its primary screen is called Glances. The order of these glances is highly customizable, but basically at a quick, well, glance, you can see your stress, body battery, calories, and more, including floors climbed since the Venue 2 has an altimeter. Tap into any of these glances and you get more detailed views you can swipe through. For example, you can see your stress level average for the week and see what stress zones you are in during the current day. On all the other watches, you'd need the Connect app to see that information. And on the Venue 2, you also get sleep data on the watch itself. Personally, as someone who doesn't like having my watch always synced with my phone or always connecting to the app, it's nice to have all of those metrics on the watch itself. To me, the difference between the Venue 2 and all the other watches I've shown you is the software experience. You can get a more premium look with the regular Venue or the Vivo Active 4. But being able to track your sleep metrics and seeing your calorie burn throughout the week on the watch itself just makes it a much more powerful device. It also has 7 gigabytes of onboard storage, which is great for all the music that you might want to download, any additional widgets or apps, and it can keep tons and tons of previous workout data on the device itself. So although the other watches, because of their screen resolution, probably couldn't fit glances on the screen, it would be nice if the widgets would just have more power like the Venue 2. But I kind of understand why Garmin hasn't done this, because otherwise they would just be cannibalizing their own lineup. It makes sense to differentiate the 2S not only with a better screen, but also with different widgets and different software interface that can take advantage of the sharper resolution. 
But despite some of those gripes, the Venue 2 is just a really nice watch to look at and use on a daily basis. It's definitely going to help you track your workouts and for sure get you moving more throughout the day. So now that I've shown you all of these watches, which is the right one for you? Starting at the top, I think the Venue 2 is a bit overpriced at $400. On sale at $350, it's a more attractive purchase that's out of the Apple Watch price range. The Venue 2 doesn't have a ton of smartwatch features or microphones for a voice assistant, which can be a good or bad thing depending on your needs and views on privacy. And at $300, the Venue 2 would be a no-brainer. And I think Garmin knows this, and I think that's why they've run so many sales on these watches and why they vary the price so much. Like the Venue SQ at $129 or $159 is a very capable watch, basically has all the features of the Venue 2, except maybe the fancy screen and the altimeter, but are those things worth it to you to spend an extra $200? I think for a lot of people who aren't really interested in fitness tracking, the answer is probably going to be no. And at a regular sale price of $250 or just $200 on sale, the Venue SQ Music Edition kind of prices itself out of the competition. So unless you really like the square shape, then at $200 or $250, you're best looking at the original Venue or the Vivo Active 4. And then that leaves the Venue 2 and the 2S. They represent the latest in Garmin's fitness hardware, an advanced heart monitor, all-day pulse ox, sleep tracking, and it has a really nice interface, and not to mention it looks the best of the bunch. But its regular price is also $400, but I think if you wait, I think if you wait just long enough, you give it a couple months, you probably see it on sale for $350 again, if not even lower, based on how historically Garmin has just kept dropping the price randomly on all of these watches. I hope this video helps you decide between these Garmin watches. But I will say this, if you run a lot or you work out a lot and you're not using a fitness tracking smartwatch, you're missing out. All of these watches in my use have really pushed me to work out harder, have improved my run times, all that because you can see the metrics directly as you're working out and it does provide some incentive to just push you just a little bit more. All of these watches, no matter which one you decide on, will do that for you and I think that's ultimately their best feature. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below and on your way down, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I will see you in the next video.